Percy is a little green engine who can shunt and pull. He pulls both passengers and freight. At the docks, and at the quarry. Percy's favorite job is carrying the mail. But sometimes Percy has so much to do, he ends up running late. One evening, Percy arrived late at Brendam Docks. You're late again, Percy, said the dock manager. I will have to speak to Sir Topham Hatt. Percy was upset. Percy returned to Tidmouth Sheds. The other engines were already asleep. Then Percy heard voices on the other side of the sheds. It was Sir Topham Hatt, and he was talking to Percy's driver. Percy tried not to listen, but he couldn't help himself. Percy has been late too often this week, said Sir Topham Hatt. He must go to the scrapyards tomorrow. Sir Topham Hatt wants to scrap me, gasped Percy. Percy worried all night long. The next morning, the sun shone and the birds sang. But Percy was too upset to notice. Sir Topham Hatt wants to scrap me, he cried, and all because I was late. Sir Topham Hatt wouldn't scrap a really useful engine, said Thomas. And you, Percy, are a really useful engine. Percy felt better until he noticed the time. I'm going to be late, he cried. Percy wished away. If he was on time, maybe Sir Topham Hatt wouldn't send him to the scrapyards. Percy's first job was collecting pipes from Brendam Docks. But when he arrived, Cranky was still unloading. Hurry up, slow coach, wished Percy. I must be on time. I'll take as long as I like, said Cranky, and he went slower than ever. The moment Cranky had finished, Percy took off. He hadn't waited for the pipes to be tied down. Percy rounded the bend. The pipe slipped and fell all over the track, but Percy puffed on. Percy thought he had delivered the pipes, so he chuffed away to his next job. Percy was to take some tar wagons to the workmen mending the roads. Be careful, said his driver. Tar is sticky stuff. But Percy wasn't being careful. He was going too fast. Percy charged down Gordon's Hill. He didn't see Gordon and the express until it was too late. The brake van passed Gordon, but the tar wagons didn't. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Gordon was very cross. Now look what you've done, he wished. What will Sir Topham Hatt say? Percy thought he knew. Oh no, he cried. I'm sure to be scrapped now. And so, Percy decided to run away. Harvey was clearing away the tar wagons when Sir Topham Hatt arrived aboard Thomas. Where is Percy, he said. He has caused confusion and delay. Gordon didn't know. Uh, he just left very quickly, sir. He heard you at the shed, sir, said Thomas. He thought you were sending him to be scrapped. Hmm. I think I need a word with Percy, said Sir Topham Hatt. You must all help me find him. And so everyone looked for Percy. 
They searched high, and they searched low. They looked to and fro, but they couldn't see Percy anywhere. What's to become of me? Percy whispered. But there was no one around to hear. Percy looked very small and felt very lonely. Thomas and Sir Topham Hatt were looking for Percy on Thomas's branch line. Thomas suddenly had an idea. I think I know where Percy is, sir. And he puffed back to Tidmouth Sheds as fast as he could. The sheds were very quiet as Thomas rolled into the engine berths. Percy, called Sir Topham Hatt. Are you there? Please don't scrap me, sir, he said. I didn't mean to be late or cause trouble. Scrap you? Boomed Sir Topham Hatt. Why the very thought of it? And Sir Topham Hatt told Percy what he had really said. I told your driver you had been working too hard, and that was why you were late. I had decided that after taking some scrap to the smelters, you were to carry the mail all week. Percy was as happy as he had ever been. Do you really mean it, sir? Puffed Percy proudly. The mail for a whole week. Thank you, sir. Percy couldn't stop himself tooting for joy. Thomas tooted too. It was good to have his friend back. So Percy carried the mail all week. He wasn't late, and he didn't make a mistake. Not one. And Percy decided never to listen to silly stories ever again, especially not ones made up by himself.